YouTube, what's going on? My name is Kevin the Tech Ninja, and if you watch this video, you're gonna be on top of some new technology before it gets popular. I'm talking about 360 cameras. <laughs> Consumer 360 imagery is here in the form of cameras and smartphones. Now you guys probably are familiar with it, as far as Google using that Photosphere option on your camera, and then when you post to Google+, Plus, you can click on the picture and then you can see the whole surrounding area. Well, that's 360 imagery in a nutshell. Basically, you take several pictures and you stitch them together, and then it makes one large picture. This technology has been around for many years and it pretty much stayed stagnant this whole time until recently. Now, you all know how Google Maps, when you go to Street View, you can actually see the road you're on. You can spin the camera all the way around in a full 360 view. Well, that's what I'm talking about today. They actually make consumer products that can do the same thing now, just like Google. Let's go back to the beginning and see how we landed here. The very first interpretation of that was actually in the 1700s. These were actually done as paintings, and these were huge paintings. I mean, 12 meters by 158 meters. I mean, these are massive, massive, massive paintings. And they were actually used to account for historical events, and they also account for just the overall landscape of an area. These were actually famous painters that would paint these landscapes and paint these historical events on these huge um, easels, so the best way to put it, or they'll make a mural on a wall. And it's just, that was just the beginning of putting your subject actually in the field, basically painting a 360 picture on actually a 2D plane. Now in the 1800s, photographers would pretty much do the same thing, except for they actually had cameras now. They'll take a picture, move over a little bit, take a picture, move over a little bit, take a picture, and then they'll actually get the pictures developed and then stitch them together manually. And then once again, you have you know somewhat of a 360 view actually in front of you and in, in just one picture. So, you know, you can sort of see in the beginnings, people really wanted to figure out a way to, you know, put a person in the scene. Basically have someone stand in your shoes at that time and place. And about 50 years later, there was a new technology. They used panoramic cameras using curved film holders to employ clockwork drives to scan a line image in an arc. And this actually created an image that was 180 degrees. And this was the very first time in history that this was an automated process. Now that you know the history of it, where is it going? Well, we're starting to see 360 cameras hit the scene now. And actually, I have one. I have the V360 camera. Now, these cameras actually use different types of technology to get you an image and video. So the 360 camera, what it does, it actually has a lens and it uses a series of mirrors to bounce the image off. And I can actually shoot a video and then move the camera in post to actually show a different part of the video I'm recording. Now the V360 isn't the only camera on the block. There are actually 360 flies and bubble and a lot of other companies out there that are making 360 cameras. Now each camera has its own downfall. For example, the V360 camera, well, if I send this video to you, it, you're gonna have two options for the video. You're gonna have the video in front and the video in behind, basically in one grid where you can watch the video from the front of the camera and behind the camera, which is no fun. Or you can have the rendered video that I created where I move the camera for you or you can download software on your PC or Mac only, then take the video and then move the camera around. But that sort of takes away the fun because the way the world's going, everyone wants to do things mobile and do things social. So right there, that's kind of no fun. So 360 Fly has an answer for that. They actually have the apps built in. So if I send you a video, you can actually use the app that will come with the video to actually watch the video in a full 360 view and move the camera around as you please. Also, they have an API for Facebook. So if I post this video to Facebook and you watch the video on Facebook, you can do the same thing and you can move the camera around. So that's pretty cool. Now, 360 Fly uses stitching technology where they take all the images and stitch them together. Sometimes you get some overlapping. Sometimes it gets overlaid. It doesn't look great. So, you know, a lot of different companies are using 360 images different ways. And Now, there hasn't been like a clear-cut winner of the best way to do it but there's hundreds of ways to get the same result. Now, this technology is pretty new. So my question to you, are you gonna get on the bandwagon or you're not gonna get on the bandwagon? Because Google's already backing it. They're actually gonna allow 360 videos to be posted to YouTube really soon. They're actually working on that and to make it interactive as well. So if I post a video, you can actually move the camera all the way around 
as the video plays so you can actually get a full view of where I was at. Now the purpose of these devices and the purpose of the paintings from the 1700s is to put a person in your shoes and to see exactly what you were seeing, putting you in the environment. It's actually the closest thing to human teleportation I can think of because you're physically there. You can see everything around, you have full control like you were there with your head on a swivel and you can honestly move. So that's why 360 imagery is a big deal and that's why from the 1700s to now, we're still trying to perfect it. As always guys, my name is Kevin Tech Ninja. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more great videos and giveaways. Take care guys.